morning. Welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney Kibitza, and joining me today for guest host is Bob Robinson. Bob, thanks for joining us. Good to be here. We're excited to have Bob. He's uh, We brought him on today for kind of our logistics guy. We always say he's the, the one that puts everything together and makes it make sense and workflow. And so one question we always get in the Stalls TV Morning Show from a lot of our viewers, as well as at StallsTV.com, is how do I set up my shop for successful printing and it's kind of a loaded question it is. Um, but we're going to talk a lot today about proper layout for your shop so how to get the most out of your equipment just by um, getting the right workflow for both you and your workers to kind of work with all of your equipment and then we're also going to talk a lot about um, accessories so you'll notice we have a lot of stuff laid out here so just different common accessories and how to set up your shop for success and successful printing so Bob um, I think before we start to talk about layout let's talk about equipment so if we're talking to people that are starting up um, and just starting to lay out their shop, what are some recommendations for equipment you could give them? Well, you have to start with a heat press. I mean, everything we do here at Stalls revolves around that heat press. That is our core, that's our hub of our business is the heat press. You can't put on a transfer without a heat press. So starting with the right heat press, one that's going to make sense for you. Uh, Size-wise, starting with size, people say, which size should I get? 16 by 20 is what we, we prefer to offer, have you guys start with uh, uh, as your initial press. It's going to cover any size design that you're going to be able to come across over your, uh, as your business grows. Uh, and you never want to shortchange yourself by not having the right size heat press. Uh, as you grow, yeah, you can maybe knock down to a 16 by 16 or even 15 by 15 for specific designs and save a little money, keep a little uh, space um, you know, as far as space constraints go. Speaking of space, which type of, which type of heat press? Uh, if you are in a real tight area, and I'll, we know a lot of you are, I was, a lot of these, these uh, layouts are going to be uh, a modified garage or a spare bedroom or what used to be the sewing room or the office or you know, people set up shop just about anywhere they can. Um, if you don't have a lot of space, you may consider a, a clamshell. An auto open clam is a great way to go because it has a smaller footprint, doesn't take up a lot of extra space, where the Fusion, which is more of a swing press, is going to take up an additional space on that side. So take in consideration your space that you're working with. Um, no matter what, a 16 by 20 good solid uh, heat press is going to be the foundation of, of your business. Okay, so that's a good point. So definitely the footprint is something to consider. Um, if you have a heat press already, if you have a swing away press, obviously as we're talking about layout, there's some more space that needs to be considered there versus mm -hmm. the just a standard clamshell heat press. So addition to the heat press, what other types of equipment are we thinking about adding or taking into considerations to our layout before we dive into that? Well, other considerations for the layout is, first of all, is some of the logistics are what kind of power requirements am I going to need for this heat press? Um, almost all of the larger size heat presses are going to take a, they're going to draw like a full 15 amps. So a dedicated circuit just for that heat press is going to be pretty ne much necessary. You don't want breakers tripping and make sure it's not a shared uh, outlet with, with something else while someone else is running a hair dryer. You're probably going to blow a breaker. Right. So make sure that, uh, make sure that it's got a dedicated circuit. And then at least one more circuit there for your computer. And I would assume that the next progression after the heat press uh, as your uh, business grows is, is a vinyl cutter. It's just the natural progression. So having a vinyl cutter there doesn't draw a whole lot of electricity. It can be shared with uh, with the uh, uh, the computer and any other uh, any other devices you might have there. Okay, perfect. So for our basic layout, when we start diving into it, we're going to talk a lot about how to lay out with the vinyl cutter, the heat press. Um, when I get started laying out things, and I think you agree, as we talk about workflow. So where do orders come in? Where do you start the process? And that's kind of how I always think about layout. Is if you're starting with um, the artwork, the computer is an, is an intricate part, but if you're using a vinyl cutter, what side of the, the cutter does the computer go on to versus where do you weed at versus where do you heat apply? So I think um, you'd put together, we put together a uh, blueprint if you want to walk through kind of an ideal layout. We'll switch sure. over and show the audience that. Yeah, and this is, these are pure suggestions. You know, don't get me wrong. There's, this, is, this is not by any means the absolute way you have to set this up because your space may not look like this. Uh, but we like to keep things, I like to keep things in this U-shaped type of layout. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, uh, um, like a pod uh, type of, of production cell. Uh, if you'll see on your right-hand side, you have a table, and there's also a table on the left-hand side. You can't have enough tables. To me, those tables need to be uh, a good size, very sturdy, and up uh, higher, as high or higher than countertop height. You don't want to be sitting at these. These are where you're going to be staging your garments, where you're going to be doing your weeding, etc. That computer is next to the cutter. Uh, most cases, they're run by USB. You're only allowed to have so much length on a USB cable, so you need to be uh, pretty close to the, to the computer with your cutter. So uh, the design starts at the computer. It goes to the cutter, and we're cutting our designs there. 
if you are a, a one-man show, you're totally on the this on your own, then you're going to need a place to weed. And that's why we go around the corner to, uh, to the left to the table there. And that's where we do all of our weeding. Of course, while that's weeding, hopefully we've got another design sent to the, to the, to the cutter. That chair that's in front of that computer, it's on wheels. You're going to be buzzing all around that place, hopefully, if you're that busy. Uh, at that table, you'll notice some circular areas there that's you know, a little bit primitive, but these represent garbage cans. Have some trash cans. You're going to have a lot of debris that needs to get, uh, get thrown away. If you're going to get real custom, you're going to really customize, I would actually cut a hole in the, in the weeding table just to drop my scraps down into that falls into a, into a trash can underneath. Uh, kind of not part of the flow, but uh, something I, I failed to mention is you're going to need roll storage. You know, to keep your rolls of material someplace. That should be over either near the cutter or above the table on the right. Uh, again, just pure suggestions here. This is basic concepts, something that you can kind of mimic your, your designs, your design of your layout. Uh, next to this. And then, of course, lastly, the heat presses on the end. Now, this can go one of two ways. Uh, if, if you're, again, if you're by yourself, uh, you're going to have that heat press faced in towards that pod. If you've got more room to the back of that, you may consider turning that the other way so that you're feeding garments to whoever's doing the heat pressing for you so that you're actually kind of feeding the designs into them. And then a, uh, even a cart, uh, a, a wheeled cart on the other side of that heat press is great for taking finished garments from ready to go send off to the, to the shipping. Yeah, so I love that layout. I think um, having the, the two extra tables are really key because you can never have enough table space when you're laying out garments. You Absolutely. Need, especially if you have a vinyl cutter and you're weeding graphics and designs. It seems like with the sticky materials, they always stick to everything. So having two dedicated workspace, I think, work really well. Yep. Um, one thing to keep in mind is, like you said, this is kind of just an idea of what's ideal. I like the um, U-shaped or the triangle layout where you're keeping everything close. I made a joke um, when we were putting this together about just the way you lay things out, even with a kitchen, they always tell you when you make a kitchen, you know, your sink goes somewhere versus your stove versus your refrigerator. And so you need to think about that even in your workspace. Should your cutter be to a certain position from the weeding table so you're minimizing the steps and what you have there? And Absolutely. The space you put together is actually a little bit smaller of a combined space. But even if you have a large space, keeping in mind that just because you have more space to work with, doesn't mean you should take your weeding table and put it on the other side of the room. Exactly. It should still be close to where your cutter is so you can go back and forth between the two pieces. This can also allow you to duplicate your efforts. You take the same podular system and just move it over, to flip it over to the next side, and now I've got a, a duplication of this. Maybe share the heat press area in the center. Um, you may not even have this type of space. You may have nothing but an inline type of system, but so we just open everything up and just create a... Uh, a, a conveyor belt assembly line type of, of design for that. So still, you know, basically this is the flow. You keep the flow, make it fit your space and, you know, as and minimize, like you said, uh, stay efficient. You minimize the amount of steps that you have, keep the trash can close. Just all those little things can actually pick up your production nicely. Right, and trash cans are definitely one of those things you should buy extra and keep them around all the different areas to keep your workplace um, clean and efficient as well. So this has been a really great option for kind of starting out layouts, but we have another layout as well because you have to keep in mind as you start to expand from just the heat press and the cutter or a couple heat presses to maybe larger equipment, printers, um, DTGs, print cut machines, um, even your screen printing um, machinery and embroidery machines, all of that factors into your workflow. So the second one we're going to show you is just kind of a, a more advanced layout. So if you want to take a look at that, um, basically what it is is the order is going to come in from um, your office space or your retail shop and then it comes back through and you can kind of see how the arrows walk us through the workflow. The same principles apply as what we did for the first one where we're thinking where does the, the order start, where does the workflow start. So it comes back um, through the printers bound into our production area from our art department. Once it comes into the production floor, um, you can kind of see the workflow where it goes from the printers to the weeding tables. If you have a print cut machine and that's kind of set up there, it would go to the laminator uh, or you would do the masking and everything on a table by hand. From there, once the transfers are created from either your vinyl cutter or your print cut machine, you take them into your heat press. And then, of course, the, the other steps to consider are where do your garments come in at? Um, where do you send things back out to your customers after they've been inspected? And all of that workflow works together as well um, in a kind of cohesive shop. So this is a really good layout as well as you start to expand and think about where do I add some additional equipment or how do I change the workflow for my expanding business. Now I've moved maybe from a home-based shop to a larger um, warehouse type location and I need to consider 
um, how to make room for all of my equipment, all my space, and all my workers. So I really love um, this workout, especially for um, kind of just being able to incorporate everything in. Yeah, we hope that everybody gets to this layout, by the way. You may start with a, with a smaller scale, but ultimately our goal is that maybe you get to the point where you're actually growing to the point where you need that kind of space. Yeah, absolutely. So those are some things to definitely consider. So we've talked a lot about layout here, and so some other key things to keeping a productive shop, um, once we understand where to put everything, our heat presses, our cutters, our printers, is to consider um, what else do we have when we're starting up. And it's kind of a loaded question when you work at trade shows and somebody's relatively new or just expanding with a heat press. And they always ask, once they buy a heat press, they say, okay, is this it? Do I need anything else? And as a salesman, I want to say, <laughs> yes, you need it all. Take everything we have. But there's some real reality in there, too. Yeah, there absolutely is. So there's definitely some accessories and some things you really should always have when you're getting started up. And it's those things that I always say that nobody knows they need them until it's too late. So some of the top accessories, stalls.com actually published a um, top seven accessories that heat printers purchase. So we're going to walk through those and kind of explain them. So the first one and the most basic is your cover sheet. So Surprisingly, a lot of you may not know, there's actually three cover sheets that are on the marketplace. Everybody knows definitely one, at least two. Cover sheets are essential no matter what you're using to cover um, the platen and cover the transfer and just keep from anything that may be applied upside down or may have been applied incorrectly from transferring either to another garment or right. sticking to the top of the platen. So, Bob, I know I have my favorite, but we're going to walk through. There's uh, three different types of cover sheets here. There's a um, reusable, uh, non or a coated cover sheet. There's a, um, we call it craft paper, but kind of more of a butcher paper, and then also a flexible application pad. So, Bob, which one of these is your favorite when it comes to laying out the... Well, they all have their, they all have their, their benefits. Uh, I think you should always have one of these, re these reusable. They're, they're relatively indestructible. It's a nonstick, reusable as many times as you like, as long as you, you know, take care of it. Uh, although it it's going to be it's going to be your one of your best friends just to have it available for you um, the downside of this one if there is one it could actually shine up some of the images a little bit when you're repressing something a separate time second time when the mask peels off and if the material will accept a different sheen it's going to get a little shinier using this type of sheet uh, that's when you would go to your favorite which is the craft sheet. It's a siliconized craft paper that's going to do the same thing that the other uh, uh, sheet does, but it's going to dull it down a little bit. It's going to give you more of a satin type of sheen. And then lastly, uh, this is, you know, talk about when you need it, you need it. Yeah, the, uh, this particular pad, this, this, this flex pad, it's a silica, it is to pure silicone, uh, rubber, very stretchable. This is perfect when you're doing those uh, performance wear, when you want to diffuse that heat nicely. When you're, even if you're going for low application, you don't want that direct heat of that iron or that heat, that uh, platinum above, touching onto that delicate garment. This is going to help diffuse that heat and um, really eliminate that scorch mark that you can get on delicate fabrics. Now, one word of caution, and you've probably heard this a ton of times, but we still forget, add additional time when you're using this, this particular sheet. It will. It takes a while for that heat to radiate through here. You'll get the same temperature, but it's going to take a little bit longer to get through. I add 10 seconds to everything, so it's a five-second dwell time. I put another 10 on it. You're not going to hurt it. You'll be glad you did. Yeah, that's a good point with that. Yeah, the craft paper, so cover sheets, if you learn nothing else here, is know that you should always use a cover sheet. Um, I know sometimes we always, people always ask, when do I use a cover sheet? For safety and for just making sure your garments stay in, um, without any extra transfer on them or your heat press doesn't need cleaned off after the application is to always use a cover sheet. I prefer the craft paper just for the mere fact that it's, for me, it's a little easier to kind of grab and throw on and off of the heat press. It's not as pliable as the reusable cover sheet, but whatever you decide to use, you'll have some tips there and definitely make sure you use one. So the second accessory, um, which is one that a lot of people don't know about, is actually a thermo tape. So it is a heat resistant tape. So this is different from a mask that you're using with a transfer or with your sign vinyl. This is actually designed to hold down transfers in place, whether mm -hmm. they be pre-cut letters or um, just transfers on an item that you're worried about it shifting or sliding during the application. And it holds it down there um, and allows you to heat apply without the, the glue from mm -hmm. the heat the, or from the tape actually heat applying and ruining the garment. So definitely essential to have. It has a dispenser so you can just keep it on hand. Um, as we've done unique applications here at Stalls TV, um, just with shoes and bags and um, just different unique print areas and we've worried about the transfer sliding or right. moving, it's really helpful to have this and hold it in place. Right. So keep that in mind. 
for those of you that have vinyl cutters, if you don't own an easy weeder, which is the uh, little weeding pick tool that you'll usually see in our Stalls TV videos or here at the morning show, and it is essential to making sure you can weed things um, and weed really small um, parts and kind of pick out the centers of designs um, with this. So a lot of people will use both exacto knives, which are incredibly um, unsafe to me, and, and I just can't believe people will still use those. But that I actually had a customer who even told me they get them from the dental. The dentist, when he's done with them, they ask him to save them and they disinfect them. But this is a nice um, reusable type of weeder, um, and I think you can't have too many of these. Right. <laughs> you need to have multiple of these in your shop because they, no matter what happens, they seem to disappear. Absolutely. So we have probably a dozen here, and at any time of day, you really you can't, can't find, find even one. one. So those are very important. Um, with the, with in addition to um, platens, which we'll show you guys here a little bit later, and how they have to help to speed up your um, production, you'll also want to keep pillows and pads nearby, especially mm -hmm. if you're looking to print more than just basic T-shirts, um, which I'm sure all of you are looking to do that buy a pack of them and keep the whole set on hand. I always often hear where people will say, oh, I think I just need the 16 by 20, I'll just get that. Mm -hmm. And I don't need all five of them that are available. But when you have all of these different sizes, you're now open to printing bags and left chest logos and all kinds of different things that you may not have thought of when you got started. So definitely a pillow, which is this um, foam piece that's actually covered with a non-slip covering, and then the pad, which is kind of more of a, a heavy silicone mouse pad type. Yeah, material. that one actually raises the image area up and where the, uh, the cushion or the, the pillow actually designed to allow the uh, buttons and plackets to absorb down into it so you still maintain the same even pressure. Absolutely. So the next one we're going to look at, which I believe is number five on our list, is going to be platen covers. So platen covers. Um, you may have noticed that all of the heat presses we use at Stalls TV and here on the morning show have a tan cover on the bottom and they're not gray. Um, that is not just by design, but they are um, incredibly helpful in just being able to protect the bottom platen. But most importantly, when you're thinking about productivity and quickly and efficiently loading garments onto your heat press, being able to have that um, non-stick surface really helps rather than the silicone where it's grabbing at it when you're loading the garment on. It also helps to reposition too. You get the shirt on even if you're laying it on traditionally without even without even um, you know, threading it on. Picking it up and repositioning it takes a lot more time. Here I can just kind of adjust it and slide it around toward the point where I like it. Yeah, it's really helpful with that as well. So definitely um, platen covers, they come in a variety of sizes for different types of platens which we'll show you here shortly and how they can speed up your productivity. Another accessory to think about is the heat eraser. So heat erasers and tools where you can cool down those cold peel transfers are really helpful to have at the heat press. And number seven on my list, which is one I love, um, and we have a ton of them here, are storage boxes. So you wouldn't think of this as an accessory probably, but think about the ability to not only store your pre-cut numbers like we have here, but being able to store different transfers, different items, and so that you don't lose them. And there's an area on the front of these storage boxes where you can actually write, this is the one for XYZ school. All of that stuff can be put right on the front of the box. Okay, so that kind of gives you the idea of the top seven accessories. Again, you can see that at stalls.com if you're looking for more information on any of those products. But in addition to accessories, so these are some of those tools where it's like you have to have them to just make sure you mm -hmm. don't make any messes or make things easier. But one or a couple of tools that we show a lot at Stalls TV that are really essential for being able to print multiple items are interchangeable platens. So I'm going to head over to the heat press so I can talk to you guys a little bit about the platens and show you how they work. Um, and just kind of why you would use each one of those in your shop and how they kind of translate over. So with a lot of the um, Stahl's heat presses or all of the Hotronics heat presses, there are a way for you to interchange the platens. Newer styles now have a quick change latch, which is traditionally a gold knob or a gray latch. You'll just undo that from the bottom of your um, heat press and you can lift out the interchangeable platens and switch in whatever size you need. So the one I have to start here is ideal for ladies' garments. It's an 11 by 15. The benefit of this, and one other benefit when you're looking to speed up the productivity of your shop, is to add a threadable heat press. This one's the Fusion, which is designed that way, but you can also add caddies to a lot of the clam style presses. But now, when I have a smaller interchangeable platen, instead of using pillows all the time or um, having trouble laying out garments very quickly, I can split open my garments, thread them on with ease, and then easily slide them off. Remember, this is why that non-stick cover is really efficient and, and helpful in being able to do that very quickly. Some other popular sizes, um, one in my opinion is always the 6x10 platen, and that's that platen that um, you do left chest logos on and different designs and things like that. So if you're doing any small graphics on zip-up shirts, Oxford shirts, all of that, that's very ideal for those. 
The sleeve platen is one for a lot of leg print or, or sleeve print. All of that's ideal for being able to print those locations. Another size that a lot of people don't know about that's very surprising is actually a seven or is a um, a round seven inch platen, and this is kind of that unique platen that I always use for bags or unique applications, duffel bags, um, different tote bags. It's kind of perfect for a lot of prints and good to have on hand as well. The next two, I'm going to move these off to this side here so I can show the last two in action. And you may have seen these in an upcoming morning show or in a previous morning show, but they are unique platens. This one is a flat bill. So I'm going to lift out that one there. Hand that off to my lovely assistant. Thank you. And I'm going to drop in the flat bill platen. So this one, again, just drops right down in and allows you to print and personalize different items like hats. So as you start to get orders for more jobs and different applications, this will allow you to do that. And the final one that we're going to show you is a shoe platen. So this one is actually a platen that allows you to load on the shoes. Give that off to my assistant for the final one. And this is where we talked a lot about needing special tools for certain applications. So as you start to look at printing items like shoes, which we showed you a couple of weeks ago on the morning show, not only do you need this platen to do it efficiently, but you'll need thermo tape to hold the transfer in place, a cover sheet like the flexible application pad. All of that translates well back over to being able to be essential in your business. So, Bob, if you want to come back over and join me here, we'll talk a little bit about some questions we've had and take some answers from our viewers. Referring back to the uh, startup layout that you showed, they're asking where would you suggest to put the storage? Storage of, of roll storage, I like it above the table on the right hand side so I can actually see. They make wall racks for the different rolls. Most of them are 15 to 20 inches wide, so I like having their full in full view. If you have more floor space, there are racks that will do uh, on hand standing. They seem to take up a little more space, so a wall rack above that area is nice because you do, that's where you're doing your color matching. That's still part of the, of the, of the design part of the portion of it where you're actually getting approval from customer that this color matches and we're doing a duplication there. Absolutely. So I definitely think, I think shelving and um, definitely some type of wall graphics. We have a lot of customers that also will use uh, filing cabinets and different storage mm -hmm. units like that um, next to their cutter for that. Uh, the question is, uh, how do you keep your platens clean? <laughs> That's a good question. So. Do you want to take that one? Sure. Keeping okay. your platen clean, it, it's really not a hard process. You want, when you clean it, you want to make sure that it's just, just warm. Uh, which it comes off a little easier when you're, when you're wiping it off. Sometimes just a simple soft cloth will wipe off whatever's there. If it's slightly warm, it'll just pick up whatever residue's on there. If it's something that's kind of stained, it's kind of an ink type of base, you're going to use a, a, a non-abrasive, a basic household type of cleaner. Whatever will take clean that off. It doesn't require a whole lot. Some people, I've had people use, um, not to promote a product, but Gojo, which is a hand cleaner, like a pump with, without the without the grit, without the pumice in there. This uh, viewer is going to be traveling with her, her machines, a print cut and a press. Um, since you guys travel a lot, any packing recommendations? Wow. Uh, I would assume that this is you're just going to travel from from place to place and not necessarily be an enclosed trailer type of of shop. Uh, you just want to mobile if you're doing especially your printer. You want to make sure you mobilize that head. You, that print head needs to be uh, engaged, and there should be something that that holds that in place so that it's not moving around. Because if you take that off of the capping station, you're going to create a, a siphon and your ink strain out, and it gets comes a mess and, and not a good thing for your printer. Uh, just making sure that everything is stabilized as much as possible. They're not so delicate that they can't travel well, but you don't want to just throw them in like you're throwing a load of lumber and taking it on a, on a bumpy <laughs> road. <laughs> Last of our questions. Okay, great. So yep. I appreciate Bob coming on and joining us today for the morning show. Definitely helpful to have a logistics guy and someone who's got a lot of um, experience in laying out shops and giving some recommendations. Um, next week for the morning show, actually in lieu of the morning show, I should say, we're going to be featuring a live Stalls TV class. So we'll be holding off the morning show discussion, but I encourage all of you to join Josh Ellsworth. He's going to give a live Stalls TV class on um, sales compensation and how to make sure you're getting the most when you're um, paying out salespeople and how to leverage that. So you can register for that at StallsTV.com under the live events link. This has been the Stalls TV morning show. Thanks for watching.